Face is a library developed by Facebook AI for doing super fast vector or similarity search. It has lots of different indexes for computing the approximate nearest neighbors of a vector. The simplest of these algorithms are called cell probe methods. And in this video, we're going to learn how they work, see how to use them, and then compare them to a brute force approach. So let's start with our Jupyter Notebook and we're gonna install Face and a few other libraries as well. Let's import the libraries that we're going to use and now we're going to create some vectors. So we're gonna keep things simple. So we're gonna use a dimension of two, so it's just gonna be 2D arrays and we're gonna create 10,000 of them and we'll do that. We'll just create a bunch of random numbers between zero and one. Once we've done that, let's create a plotly um, chart of this so we can see what we're working with. And you can see it's just a bunch of gray circles kind of scattered around. So far so good. Let's now create a search vector that we're gonna try and find amongst all of those points. We'll create a search vector 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so we'll go right in the middle. And then let's add that to the plot. And so it's gonna, you can see it comes up there. We've got a nice um, black X in the middle. And that's what we're, we're looking for. So now we're going to create um, a cell probe index. So let's have a quick look at the documentation. So effectively what it says is that what these methods do is they partition the vector space into a number of cells, uh, in this case using the k-means algorithm. And then when we search uh, with a search vector, it's gonna find the cell that's closest to our search vector and then look and, and then do a search across all the uh, the other vectors that fit in that cell and see which ones are the closest to the search vector. So let's go back uh, to the Jupyter Notebook again and we're gonna create uh, 10 cells and then we'll define the, the quantizer and the index as well. And now we're going to call the train function on the index and pass in, we're gonna pass in all our vectors. Now what this will do is compute the centroids that those cells are based on. And we, can, we would usually use a sample of the vectors, a representative sample, but in this case, we've only got 10,000 values. So it's probably gonna be fine to just train it. Once we've done that, we can then look at the quantizer and pull out the centroids. And so if we have a look at what we've got back, you can see we've got a bunch of of points, so there should be 10 different ones, and those are, are representing the cells that have been uh, extracted um, from the, the vector space. So let's now update our chart to show the centroids and then to which cell each vector has been assigned. So we're gonna call the, uh, on the quantizer, we can then call the search function, pass in the vectors and say k equals one. And what it's gonna do, instead of actually computing um, like an actual search, it's gonna just tell us, okay, which, which cell uh, does each one belong to? And then we'll call flatten on that. And then you can see the, the, uh, the cells for the first 10, so zero, four, three, one, and so on. Now we're going to create a chart so we can just see what does that actually look like. So we're gonna create a color map. So this is a function just gives us some, some colors. We'll create a plot. Uh, then we're gonna get the unique cell ID. So we're gonna be, they're gonna be 10 of these. We'll then iterate through them. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, plot uh, each of the points with a, with a, with a color. Per, per cell. And then afterwards, we're gonna uh, plot the, the centroid, uh, each of the centroids and the search vector on there as well. And we'll give that a few seconds to render. And this now, this very colorful diagram here shows us how the vector space has been split. So we can see the X in the middle is sitting in kind of a sort of pinkish purple area. We've then got a green one over to the left, a sort of orangey one at the top and then a yellow one uh, over to the right. And so this is how, this is how the space uh, is split. Uh, and our search, Vector looks like it's right in the middle of one. So I think we're gonna be, it's gonna be, the, the uh, approximate nearest neighbors of search is gonna work quite well. Now we're gonna look at how we would go and search for our vector. And so what we need to do, first thing we need to do, so we've worked out the centroids, what we need to do now is assign all of our vectors to that index. So we call the add function and do that. Now when we're using a cell probe index, we can specify how many cells we want to search. Uh, and the idea is that if we do less cells, it's gonna be faster, but maybe not as accurate. And if we do more cells, it's probably gonna be more accurate, but potentially slower. And if we put it to use all the cells, it's gonna be exactly the same as if we did a brute force search across everything. The, we can have a look at what the, the, the default cell probe by calling um, n probe, so index n probe, and that will tell us how many is it gonna, is it gonna use. Uh, and in this case, it's actually just, just once. It's gonna look at the closest one to the vector search and then search across all of those vectors. So let's have a look at what, what results we get if we actually do that. So we're gonna call index.search and we're gonna say, let's find 10 nearest neighbors and then we'll put the results uh, into a data frame and we're gonna get the vectors and then the distance. And you can see we get back uh, a bunch of vectors and they're all very, very close uh, to the search term. So what actually happened when we ran that search? So the first thing was 
it called the quantizer. It did a search for the search vector and figured out which cell it belonged to. And so we can have a look what was that cell. So it was actually the cell with index number three. So let's have a look which points were selected from the cell with index number three. Uh, and let's actually go and render a, a plot so we can see what it looks like. So we're going to again iterate through the, those, or in this case, it's only one value, right? So we're going to iterate through uh, cell three. We're going to then plot uh, each of the points that belong to cell three and the centroid uh, for, for cell three. Then we'll do the search vector. And then finally, we're going to plot the uh, nearest neighbors, the approximate nearest neighbors points that came back. And so this is what we'll get. So remember, it's the purple one uh, that was sitting uh, in the middle. Uh, and we can see over sort of to the left hand side, you can see the, the, the search vector is the X. And we can kind of see like all the points are sort of scattered around there. So it looks like it's done a, a, a pretty good job, I would say so far. But how well did this approach work compared to what would happen if we did a brute force search? So let's have, let's create one of those. So we can create a brute force index. We'll add our vectors in there. And then we can do the brute force search and get back the uh, the results and put those into a data frame as well. And what we'll add extra in this one is we'll indicate which cell that that value was in. And what we would hope is if the approximate um, nearest neighbors has worked well, they should all be in cell number three. And if we look at the results, we can see, yes, they are all in cell number three. Uh, and so the result from uh, approximate nearest neighbors is exactly the same as brute force. Uh, but if the accuracy of approximate nearest neighbors wasn't as high as we wanted, we can actually configure the number of cells to search. We can adjust that n probe value. So we could set it, for example, to two and do the search. Uh, and, and if we look at the quantizer search, this will tell us, okay, what's the next cell that it might look at? And it's gonna be number six. So that's the next closest one. And if we then ran um, the, the a search on the index, we would get back the results. And it, it, it takes a little bit longer to, to run. And actually, the results are going to be exactly the same, right? There aren't any in cell six uh, that, that would be picked up. Uh, so if you like this video, you might like this other one up here, explaining vector search and my, why you might want to use it.